So there are a lot of myths about snakes. So in today's video, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be debunking some of those myths about them. So stick around. My name is Nick Pulaski. Growing up, I have always had a passion for wildlife. And with that passion, along with my passion of filmmaking, I get taken on some amazing adventures creating wildlife content. Getting up close with a variety of incredible animals. So come follow along as I pursue my goals of educating, inspiring, exploring, and conserving wildlife, all while having fun, seeing the beauty in our natural world. What is going on everybody? Thank you so much for joining me here today. As you can see, I have a special guest with me. I have my Wilma Python female here, Willow. She's just such a sweetheart and I love her to death. And today what we're going to be doing is we're actually going to be debunking some myths about snakes. There are a ton, a ton of myths out there and we're just going to be debunking some of the top ones that I've seen in the past. And if you guys have any other myths down in the comments, definitely leave those down below and we can debunk those together. I would love to hear your myths down below that you've heard about snakes as well. So definitely leave those down below. So to start off, where did a lot of these myths about snakes originate? And to put the answer simply, a lot of these myths came up when a lot of research was not as current and updated as it is today from new studies and new findings. Now it is always important, no matter what the topic is, to always constantly educate yourself and continuously educate yourself no matter what the topic is because there is always continuously new research being done and new studies and new findings about certain topics, for example, like snakes. That way, for example, with snakes, you can get a better understanding and appreciation for these amazing reptiles. So let's bust our first myth now, shall we? So the first myth that I want to bust is snakes actually go out and chase people. That is not true whatsoever. It may look from some species, like for example, the black mamba, like they are chasing people. But at the end of the day, if I put this snake down, if I put a black mamba down, if I put a rat snake down, for example, more commonly that you would see, if I put any of these species down, they are not going to be chasing you. In fact, what they're going to be doing is they're actually going to be running away from you. Bottom line, the snake is trying to get away from you. It is not trying to chase you. And I commonly like to use this example. So say you and I are both walking down the street and we're trying to cross each other's paths and we're trying to get to different directions. Say if we're just walking and all of a sudden we meet in the intersection right here in the same point, that's going to look like we're actually intentionally trying to bump into each other in a certain way. Same thing applies with the snake. A snake is trying to go one way, you're trying to go one way. If you guys both meet in the middle, it's going to look like it's chasing you. But what that is not the case whatsoever. The snake is trying to get away from you. It knows a spot that it wants to go, so it's going to go that way. Because at the end of the day, you have to think you are a huge, ginormous, large thing versus it. It wants to get away from you. It wants to get away from where it's feeling threatened. Snake is only going to lash out when it is feeling defensive or if it is out of hunger and it is not going to go and try to eat you I can assure you on that so it's normally just out of defense that it's trying to lash out at you and lunge at you and strike but it's not going to be chasing you whatsoever so that myth is busted Willow is all wrapped up around me I just love this girl to death she is just such a sweetheart but let's bust another myth shall we so the next myth I want to bust is that snakes dislocate their jaw when they're eating and that's not the case whatsoever instead what they do on their bottom jaw is there actually is a membrane that actually can stretch when they're trying to eat a larger prey item that say is like 200 to 300 or sometimes even more percent larger than what their head actually is. So they are, have that ability where they can actually stretch out that membrane and get something down that's a lot larger than their head. That way they can get the prey item down with ease and then it just essentially unstretches. So it does not dislocate their jaw whatsoever. It's just the membrane stretches on their jaw, which is honestly pretty cool if you ask me. So another myth that a lot of people think is true is with snakes that actually constrict their prey when eating, also known as constrictors. Basically what the myth is, is that when they are constricting their prey, the cause of death is actually by asphyxiation, which isn't the case whatsoever. And basically what the constrictor is doing rather than the death of asphyxiation is basically as they coil up and as they constrict and tighten their constriction, basically what's happening is they're cutting off circulation. And the cause of death is actually stoppage of blood flow. It's actually pretty interesting because a test was actually done on anesthetized rats and basically what they did was they actually gave these to a boa and what they did was they monitored their heart rate, their blood flow, and their circulation levels. And what they discovered was when they offered the rat and when the boa grabbed it and then constricted it, basically there was a stoppage of circulation and stoppage of blood flow to the animal itself and that was basically the cause of death. And it's pretty interesting too because after they coil up and if it's a really tight coil, the stoppage of circulation happens in seconds. And this is a very, very common myth, probably one of the most common myths that snakes are poisonous. So basically, I just want to break this down by definition. So how does poison basically work? So poison has to be ingested, it has to be absorbed, or it has to be inhaled to be considered poisoned. So otherwise, if it is venom, venom has to be injected into the bloodstreams. So like say an open wound, that is a perfect way for venom to get injected into your bloodstream. Also 
to if a fang or a stinger goes inside you or inside something that is also how you can get injected with venom so it is totally different in terms of how these processes actually work so bottom line that's how i'm basically going to simplify and put poison versus venom simply now one species in specific that is actually labeled as poisonous is actually the asian tiger keelback and it's actually a super rare species of snake and i'll actually put a picture up right here so you guys can actually take a look and see what this snake is it's a beautiful snake that's for sure now you might be asking how does it get its toxins and where does it store its toxins so it's actually a really interesting thing so basically how it gets its toxins is actually based on what it eats so it's prey items so there are actually certain species of toads for example that it can go after and if it eats those it can actually store its toxins that the toad actually produces in itself and it actually has glands along its neck where it can actually store all these toxins so for example if a predator goes after an asian tiger keelback and it has stored toxins in its glands basically what's going to happen is that animal is going to get sick and potentially perish as well because of the poison and there are other snakes like this that have similar traits as well too for example at certain species of garter snakes so if certain species of garter snake actually goes after a certain species of salamander and they takes the toxins from that salamander after it eats it it can actually store those toxins inside its saliva for a certain amount of months and that's actually pretty cool as well so if we got bitten by that garter snake being a non-venomous snake that snake is not necessarily going to kill you but you will definitely potentially have a rash if it had a certain prey item ingested beforehand so it's a pretty interesting trait as well so now with that all being said you have to keep in mind that it's not going to be common at all to be coming across this type of snake it's very very rare so more often than not and i would say basically 10 out of 10 you're going to be coming across a venomous or a non-venomous snake and i would say it's very important to learn the local snakes in your area that way you can determine whether a snake is venomous or if it is non-venomous and then also taking proper measures in hand to make sure that you're admiring it from afar or getting someone in that's a professional so they can take care of it you don't want to be killing the snake you don't want to be killing snakes senselessly that's not what you want to do whatsoever but we'll talk about that more in a little bit so yeah like i said more often than not the snakes that you're going to be coming across in the wild are going to be either non-venomous or they're going to be venomous so definitely keep that in mind all right so the next myth that we're going to buff is that snakes are slimy so if i put willow up here to the light a little bit you're going to notice that she kind of has this sheen and iridescence to her scales and that kind of makes it look like she is actually slimy so for a first time snake handler if they're just kind of looking at this and they haven't held a snake or touched a snake whatsoever they're going to think that this animal is actually slimy but if i put a paper towel to her if i rub my hands against her or anything like that she's not giving off any sort of wetness whatsoever she is totally totally dry but super super soft that's for sure she has smooth scales that's what walnut pythons have there are smooth scaled snakes and there are also snakes with keeled scales like for example like a hognose snake for example there are snakes out there that have rougher kind of scales that's called a keeled scaled snake but scales on a snake are basically like their armor they are here to protect the snake they are not going to give off any sort of mucus any sort of wetness whatsoever slime anything whatsoever they are totally totally dry and they are really cool to handle and that's really cool for first time handlers because that's kind of how like the gateway is for these guys is a lot of people are turned off about handling a snake because they're grossed out that it's going to be all slimy and gross but then once they just at least touch the snake and they realize that it is not slimy whatsoever then they're more enticed to handle the snake and they're going to be asking more questions and they're going to become a snake lover at the end of the day nine times out of ten it's actually a really cool thing that's always what the big thing is is snakes are slimy and they're not whatsoever so that is definitely a busted myth all right so here's another myth for you guys snakes are evil you hear that willow you are evil no that's not the case whatsoever basically snakes are misunderstood so how they're basically misunderstood is through books through movies and media and also through religion and through these routes snakes are commonly portrayed as these evil figures and they are commonly given this negative representation so people commonly believe that they are out to do evil things when that is simply not the case whatsoever again if you see a snake strike at you it's not because it's an evil being there are two main reasons why a snake will actually lunge out and strike at you the first one being that it is trying to defend itself and that is probably the most common reason because you are a giant versus this little guy right here look at this girl's head versus mine i mean i have a big head in general but she definitely has a lot smaller head versus me so her perception of me is thinking i am this ginormous giant and i am trying to get away from you obviously that's not the case whatsoever she's totally comforted right on my arm right here using me as a human tree but let's say for example if this was a wild snake for example they are thinking of you as a giant threat and they want to get away from you as fast as possible second reason that a snake might strike at you is out of hunger so if they are striking at a prey item for example and they've accidentally lash out at you that is another example of something that can commonly happen as well but it's not because they're evil that's for sure and it isn't fair to represent them as evil that's for sure and this myth kind of
of ties into the last myth that I just said, and it also is a saying that's quite common as well, and it is the only good snake is a dead snake. Not true whatsoever, because snakes, like we just said, are not evil beings. If you give snakes the proper respect and proper distance that they need, and you admire them from afar, they're not going to bother you whatsoever. They're not going to think of you as a threat. They're just going to mind their business and go about their day, and as should you. And I know there are encounters every single day between humans and snakes that people sometimes don't desire, and there are people out there that can actually help you if you need help removing a snake rather than just chopping off its head and killing it. You don't want to do that, especially if you don't know what the type of snake is. You never want to get close to a snake if you don't know what it is because if one, it could be venomous. So it's good to admire it from afar and let an expert come in and they can actually relocate the snake. You never want to take matters into your own hands because you can harm you. It's not right to kill the snake as well too. It's definitely something that you want to keep in mind. And it's like I said, always important to know what's local to you because there are going to be sometimes human to snake encounters. And basically it's always good to know what's in your area so you're better prepared as well as also bringing in an expert as well too. That way say for example if it's in your home or on your property it can get removed and get relocated to a safer area so it can stay alive, stay safe, and you can stay safe as well too. And, but at the end of the day it's great to learn how to live with snakes rather than against them and that can be said with wildlife in general. So death to all snakes can cause ecological problems that can cause issues to the checks and balances of nature. So snakes are a great prime example of rodent control. So if you take snakes out of an ecosystem and a habitat, basically what's going to happen is there's going to be a huge rise and uptick in rodent population, which can be a crazy devastating thing in and of itself. So snakes are actually a great thing to keep around for sure. Like I said, it's great to learn to live with snakes rather than against them. And like I said, it's great to learn that with all wildlife, that's for sure. So definitely do your research and educate yourself on how you can better live amongst snakes rather than against them. And also definitely research any local species to you. That way you can be more confident in identifying as well as I definitely recommend bringing in experts whenever you need to just so you can be a hundred percent sure of what situation you're dealing with and admire the snake from afar and give its distance and respect. <sighs> but yeah that is just a few of the myths that I have heard about snakes and I definitely wanted to share some of those ones to you because those are definitely the top ones that I think are important to share. If you guys have any other myths down below that you want to debunk definitely leave those down below. I would love to hear those as well too. Thank you guys so much for watching today's video. It truly means the world to me. If you guys could do me a few favors if you could like this video and subscribe to the channel i would greatly appreciate it as would willow here as well too as well as hit that notification bell so you know when i upload and besides staying up to date on these videos definitely stay up to date on our social media as well too thank you guys so much again for watching and until next time we will see you guys soon